All right, this is not a quick speed shot. I'm gonna use my homemade spring stretcher to try to spread the spring out of this 37 quarter end. Get it out of here. It's a little dangerous. Am I gonna die? Who knows? Let's find out together right now. Okay, we're gonna start off right with the dangerous stuff. I gotta get this spring out of here. This is the, the rear end that came out of my 37 Ford, the original 37 uh, 60 horsepower rear end. And I need the leaf spring off it to put on the main leaf of the, of the new rear end. So I've made this homemade spring spreader. And what we're doing is the leaf spring is an arc, right? And it's under tension right now and it's, it's held out here and it wants to go like this, but it can't because the shackles are on it. So I need to spread the spring out to take the load off the shackles so I can take the nuts off them and then remove the spring from the rear end and then slowly release the pressure until the spring can, re can go back to its natural state of rest. So what I essentially I did off camera is I made a spring stretcher and just two pieces of one inch threaded rod with a piece of tubing in the middle that they slide in and I tighten up these two nuts here I got these clamp-on brackets that clamp onto the eyelid of the spring so they can't get away. And they got a pocket for the threaded rod to push into so that hopefully can't get away. And I'm simply going to crank these nuts, stretch the spring enough to take the tension off and get it out of here. So I'm going to put on some safety gear because uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm at least going to have safety glasses and we're going to try to do this right now. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up all the nuts on the shackles here. Oh, that worked out pretty easy. I just want to bust them free so I don't have to fight with them while I've got the spring precariously uh, perched. I sprayed them down with some juice a little while ago. Come on, yikes. I'll just back them off a couple of couple old turns here. I tried this out last night when I set it up uh, just to make sure that I didn't immediately die. And I think it's going to work. We'll, we'll find out. So I don't have a wrench big enough to run these nuts. So I got to use this uh, little squared off pipe wrench I got. And I found that the tube wants to spin. So I'm going to go ahead and put this vice grip on it here. Which is going to let it roll down and hit the spring. So I got to be careful. I'm a little nervous. stuff in the way everywhere here and I uh, don't really have a good way to get away but just go and I, I literally tighten the nut a little bit at a time and it should um, right now the shackles are straight out it should push the spring and start to uh, bend the shackle a little bit uh, let's see which ways it want to, doesn't want to go down I think I want to help it a little bit by yeah there we go these bushings are stiff so if I can help it get where it wants to be yeah I think I think I'm all right because I can move this move the shackles up and down no, sir, I don't like it. What I'm going to do is pop, try to pop these shackle pieces loose and see if anything bad happens. And try to stay out of the blast zone. Oh, it looks like it's okay. Ooh. Yeah. That worked out good. Let me get the let's put a little jack, a little jack action under here to catch the spring. I'm gonna 
I'm going to stand back a little bit here and see what happens. Oh, that's a good sign. Try to get out of the blast zone. of the shackle. So now I can uh, back my tension off on the spring spreader here, which is this way. Should have used some grease. It's not. <clears throat> Come watch the spring moved here. This thing is really arched up big time, big time. I think my only problem is my th my threads are stuck in my pocket. I think that's what's happening here. Yeah, because there we go. That My thread, my threaded rod is stuck because it's want it wants to fold it like this. I'm gonna have to start taking some of the tension out of this. Okay, got the spreader out. I had to loosen both these up and then uh, tap on them with a dead blow hammer. And I was able to get to drive the uh, rods out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off our spring. Take the other shackle off. Next step we're gonna do is disassemble the spring. Take all the leaves off because we're going to replace the main leaf and uh, that'll be the next trick. Okay, I got the spring off the rear end here and I've got it. What I want to do is take it apart. I got a, a bolt here, square head on top and it's got a bolt with a grease fitting that holds all the leaves together. But first I've got to cut the uh, these brackets here, the clamps that hold the leaf pack together. They've got a peened over uh, what do you call it? It's like a, like a long rivet, rivet, I guess, or peened over on the ends to hold the clamps together there. So I gotta, I'm gonna cut these. I'll have to put a bolt in it when I put it back together. I'm gonna cut these. I got a couple of clamps just in case the thing wants to spring a little bit. It won't. And I'm just gonna cut it from afar. Here we go. just help hold things so they don't get out of hand. I don't know how long this nut is. This bolt's not very long. So I've got a couple of threads there. Let's back this off a little bit. You can see the spring is starting to spread. Okay. That was up the leaf came off. Let's go ahead and back these off. This should oh. Just gonna stick a bolt through here, a long, long, long bolt, so this thing can't get away.
So the thing can't get away from me. So it'll slow it down. The carnage will be cut to a minimum. Should be See that? When I pulled that pin out, still had some tension left on that. And it's still got a little, still got a little bit on there. The bolt, I put that long bolt in there and it's, uh, there's still some tension on, on that. I gotta back the nut off now. You can see there's, there's a lot of tension in these springs. You gotta be careful. Now I can pull this out. Now, now we're safe. So you can see, here, see the spring, see this groove? Oh, it's got a, uh, a hollow center section and it. it lets grease go up and come out of the, of the bolt where the nut go. Yeah, there's a grease fitting in the nut and you grease up through the center of the bolt. Let's throw that on there so I don't lose it. But what we wanna do, is on the rear end, I've got the new main leaf. This has got the standard eye where the eye is down and the new main leaf is a reverse eye leaf. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. And what I wanna do here is take all these leaves and keep them in order, but I'm gonna clean them up. Clean them up, get the get the road grime and the, the tar and stuff that's built up on them cleaned off. And we're gonna reassemble reassemble the spring on the new main leaf. Okay, I got my new uh, main leaf here with the reverse eyes on it. See that? They're up on top and set on the bottom. And I want to start assembling it. I cleaned up the leaves, took all the grunge off them. I left the grease on them because it's just gonna get re-greased anyways. But then I went and saw that the second leaf doesn't fit, it's too long. It hits the reverse eyes because originally with the regular eyes it went all the way out to the end. So I've got to trim the spring down and I've marked it on both ends there with a the red line. I'm gonna take about two inches off both ends just, just up above where the third leaf goes and that'll clear here. So I'll just take my cutoff wheel and I'll cut them off and I'll round the edges up with the, with the grinder but essentially, I'm just going to take this spring and uh, re-grease it and stack the leaves back together. You can see the difference in the arch. The new spring is a lot flatter, the new main leaf, but I'll suck them down. We'll use the long bolt and the, the uh, C-clamps, suck the spring back together, and then uh, should be ready to go to put it back in the car. But you can see... Here, the, the very edges of the springs never got any grease and they're rubbing steel on steel. So I'm gonna grease this all the way out to the end. The grease groove ends about here so the grease wasn't getting out there. So I'm gonna use some axle grease and grease this all up real good on both sides. You can see where it was rubbing and make sure I got grease all the way out to the end on every leaf and it'll make a nice, nice new setup. I'm just gonna take some grease and go on the bottom of the leaf here right up to the edge. And it doesn't have to be very thick. Just want to put a little bit of a little little dab will do you. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some on the bolt, the bolt 
the center bolt will get a lot of this, but I'll just like put a little bit more on here. Never have too much grease on your spring. That's what I say. This thing will be slip working like gangbusters. I'm just going to take and leave this right on here. What I want to do is just start assembling this one leaf at a time. And it's going to be a little tricky. I think I'm going to lay this down on the side. But I'll go ahead and I'll grease the next surface. I'll wipe this down on the outside, uh, the outside edges the best I can, and I'm going to paint the spring black from the outside, but there's no sense painting the, the center of these leaves. It'll just wear the paint off. And it's scared you got grease on it. There's no sense, no need for paint on the center of the leaves. So I'm going to lay this down. And I'm going to take the bolt and start running the bolt up through. The bolt just to keep everything lined up. I'm gonna, once I get a couple leaves on here, I'm going to have to start using the C-clamp and start mushing things together and work it as I go. But it, uh, it, should, it should work out okay. So I already greased, already greased the top of that. So I'll just grease the top of every new leaf I put on. Like that. See, it's already, uh, it's splayed out pretty good just just sitting here on its own so that's why you need the c-clamps to put it back together because you'll never you'll never get it all the way I think what I'll do, because I got these cross bolt pieces now, I think I can use the C clamps and squeeze the spring to the point where I can put those, uh, uh, put the pins back in, or use bolts, but use, the, use those to uh, hold the spring. They will help hold it together. Okay, I'm in the fun part where you've got to try to squeeze all the clamps together at the same time and not have everything come apart. And hopefully get your temporary bolt out and be able to get the correct bolt in. So this is always fun. You gotta be very, very careful. Especially when everything is all greasy now. It's drawn together. My only question is the stupid the stupid bolt the spring is shifted a little bit. Oh, you know why? Because that's bound up here. Let me... That wasn't even doing anything, but that was... We've got to try to tap this stupid bolt over. Straighten the leaves out. Ok, 
carefully knock this out. And I'm going to follow it right up with the correct bolt. Boom! Just like that. Get my nut started. Woo! Now we're in the safe zone there. Now. We're in the safe zone. Now I can draw it together the rest of the way with the center bolt. That's got it. Now, let's go ahead and, yep. Look at that. Oop. Got our new, oh, oh. running out of table here. Yikes, yikes. So there we go. Got our spring all assembled. Got some extra grease on here. The final step is to reassemble the spring spreader. And we'll uh, spread this out, spread it out a little bit and put it in the car. I'm, th I'm thinking with the longer shackles, it's not gonna be too big of a struggle and it should go in there good. I put longer shackles on help with a drop. This, this new drop main leaf should give about two and a half inches of drop with the reverse dies and the, the arch is a little flatter. And then the uh, longer shackle should pick up maybe another inch or so. So it should lower the back of the car about three inches-ish. So that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, we're ready to put the spring back in here. And I've got it, I painted the bottom of the spring. I'm gonna hit it with the paint once again, once we get it installed. But we got the spring spreader reinstalled. I went and I ground the threads off the end here like I said I was going to, so hopefully it won't bind up in the uh, keeper. I also had to make a new top plate here um, because these shackles have a little bit bigger rounded end on them and it would have pushed into that and I wouldn't be able to get the bolt through. So I made a new top plate that has uh, got a little uh, piece here that sticks out so I can uh, push back and not have the shackle get in the way. So this new, because these new shackles are longer than stock, stock where the hole would have been about here. These are an inch longer. I'm not going to have to spread the spring as far. And we're pretty close now. I just got a little bit of tension on the, on the spreader. And when I pull the shackle out and put this one up, it's, it's close. It's like only got to go like an inch. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and start cranking this. Let's see, should I? I'm going to support this with something. Like this. Some kind of random bottle jack. Let's use this. Yeah. Ooh, that's perfect. And actually, I bet this would go, how high has it got to go? Yeah. There you go, we'll set it up on that, that'll help us. So I'm just gonna start, uh, start cranking here on the nuts. We'll start spreading. Like I said, it's not gonna take much. Brand new bolts here on the bottom. It's got brand new nylon uh, bushings. I ordered from Bob Drake, I think. There. I got both shackles in there. I just got to take the tension off and it should pull the shackles out parallel, but then when put weight on the spring, it'll go down. And there we go. The spring is on. I went and I rattle can the ends of it with some satin black to match. 
put my original uh, spring pad that goes up in the cross swimmer back on here. I bet this is some kind of like asbestos or something that lasts forever because it's original. But check this out. It uh, it works. Bam. So ah, that's greasy. So I'm hoping that uh, with these longer shackles, when the spring flattens out, it doesn't uh, get too past 45 where the rear arm's going to want to walk around because these are longer. The the up until 1942, they used the the shackles to locate the back of the car, the spring, the front, and the rear. Um, the shackles would go to a 45 degree angle, and then that way the rear end or the front end couldn't move side to side because they have equal tension on the shackles. And then in 40, I think 42 to 48, they went to like almost vertical shackles with a track bar that mounted on, I think, this side and went across the back of the car and kept the rear end located with the, with the track bar. And they did the same thing in the front. So I've, with the longer shackles, when the spring goes out, the shackles are going to, the spring's going to want to be down and it's going to push the shackles more than the short ones. So it might not have the correct angle. The rear end might want to walk back and forth in the car. But I'm not going to know that until I get all the way down the car, get it down, see how the suspension works. I have to push it back and forth, but like, uh, the answer to that would be to make a bracket that would bolt on to the, to the housing here and have a short track bar just go over to the frame rail to locate the rear end if, if that's going to be a problem. But I'm hoping these shackles are, are short enough where it's not going to do that. It might not be correct at the correct 45 degree angle, but if, as long as there's still some angle on the shackles, the rear end shouldn't want to shift around. So we'll figure it out when we put the car together. But so there we go. We've rebuilt and swapped over the main leaf to the reverse size spring. Put all the spring packs back together, grease the thing up, it's ready to go, it's installed. Made a homemade spring spreader that didn't kill me, so that was a win, bam. And uh, next time, I'm gonna be taking this rear end, and Kirk, we're gonna put it back in the car. I've got to put the gas tank in the car there first, the 35 Ford gas tank that I'm using. I'm gonna slap that up in there, then we'll slide the rear end up in, get it jacked into place, get the, uh, the uh, front clamshell piece for the torque tube, we'll get that in, we'll, we'll bolt the rear end up to the transmission, then jack this up, relocate the spring in the uh, cross member, get that in there, and then uh, I can put the brakes back on, put the hubs back on, and uh, eventually we'll set the car down and see. I'm hoping it's going to have about a 3 inch rake backwards, like a late 40s custom or mid 40s custom tail dragger setup. So I'm really excited, and uh, I think it's going to work out just fine. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm putting out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays now, Wednesday afternoon and Sunday morning. And we'll, we're keeping working on the 37 Ford. We're going to keep getting one step closer to getting that flathead running. So i uh, see you again right here doing all cool Ford stuff at the Quick Speed Shop. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home.